Grandma Tolton and my mother wanted to visit Aunt Emily who lived in Kanash, Utah. They had asked Orville to drive the team and wagon for us. The trip from Beaver to Kanash was about 48 miles by wagon. It took two days. That meant an overnight stay in Cove Fort. Grandma Tolton had quite a passion for visiting. She knew the people living in Cove Fort, so staying the night there was a great pleasure for her. After getting a late start leaving Beaver, we arrived at the fort around 5 in the evening. The women folk were given beds for the night inside the fort. Because the space and beds were limited, Orville and I had to sleep in the wagon outside the fort. We prepared for the night, unhitching the horses, watering them, and tying them to the rear wheels of the wagon. They could reach in through the opening in the canvas at the rear of the wagon and eat the hay that was stored there for them. Orville, being who he was and having a reputation for being a great storyteller and a tease, spent the rest of the evening telling me stories about wild Indians, how they would sneak in to white men's camps and scalp them in their sleep. I could tell he was doing his best to get at me and scare me half to death. Well, he accomplished his goal. But what he didn't know was that his stories were affecting him also. After numerous scary Indian stories, we settled down under a couple of quilts in the back of the wagon. The only available light was provided by the moon and stars shining through the open ends of the canvas top covering the wagon. I shortly fell asleep only to be awakened by horrifying screams of, The Indians are here! There was Orville, standing up in the wagon, yelling over and over at the top of his lungs. The Indians are here! The Indians are here! I've lost my scalp! The Indians are here! His cries quickly brought the folks from the fort carrying weapons of all kinds. Guns, pitchforks, farm equipment, sabers, anything that was handy. I frantically tried to bury myself beneath the hay, hoping I would not share the same fate as Orville. After a quick look around, finding no Indians, everyone came back to the wagon to hear what Orville had to say. His voice was filled with excitement and terror as he told everyone that there had been twenty wild Pavant Indians surrounding the wagon, that the chief, eager to show his prowess as a warrior, had made off with the horses and had almost sent him off to the happy hunting grounds, his bloody scalp being evidence of what the Indians had done. Raising his hand to his head, Orville gingerly touched his wounded scalp, finding it sopping wet, saying, Feel my hair, it's all wet with blood. Sure enough, his hair was wet, but not with blood. Upon closer examination, they found a few hairs protruding from the mouth of one of the horses as it lazily chewed on some hay. It was decided, to everyone's amusement, that the horse, reaching in for some hay, had grabbed a mouthful of hair, slobbered all over Orville's head, and yanked out a small patch of his hair. <laughs>